Hi guys and welcome back to our channel. This is part 7 of GCP Digital Leader Real Exam Questions. Before we start, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications whenever we upload a video. Alright, so let's start. Question 31. An organization wants to use all available data to offer productive suggestions on their website that improve over time. Which method should the organization use? Let's read the options. Option A, data automation. Option B, trends analysis. Option C, machine learning. And option D, multiple regression. All right, so let's start by eliminating the options. So uh, we'll start with option B, trends analysis. The question requires the website to improve over time. Now trends analysis is used to make investment decisions. We don't need to make investment decisions in this case. So uh, B is not the answer. Uh, we'll just cross off B. And now let's go on to option D, multiple regression. Um, by definition, it is a statistical technique that can be used to analyze the relationship between single dependent value and several multiple, well, multiple independent values. We don't need that in the question. We just need uh, predictive suggestions so that the website improves over time. So D is not the answer. We'll cross the D off. Now we're left with options A and C, data automation and machine learning. Option A, data automation. It'll help in getting the data from multiple sources into a single data depository, but it won't help in making decisions. That is why we'll choose machine learning over data automation. That is why A, data automation is also not the answer. So we're only left with C, that is machine learning, and obviously that is the answer because it'll not only help in getting data from multiple sources, It'll also help in offering productive suggestions. So once again, for question 31, C, machine learning is our answer. So let's head on to the next question, question 32. Let's read the question out. An organization wants to transform multiple types of structured and unstructured data in the cloud from various sources. The data must be readily accessible for analysis and insights. Which cloud storage system should the organization use? Let's read the options. Option A, relational database, B, private data center, C, data field, and D, data warehouse. All right, right off the bat, we see that the question requires uh, the storage system to store both structured and unstructured data. Uh, we'll underline that. Now, the thing is, A, relational database, it only stores structured data, not unstructured data. That is non-relational database. That is why A is not the answer. We'll cross A off. Now B and C, private data center, it's telling you to use the entire data center as a storage system. Um, we won't need that big of a facility. So that is why um, B is not the answer. We'll cross B off. C, data field. Now data field is just a simple component. It's only a part. For example, if you take um, open office database, uh, data field is basically when you specify the type of data, you specify the field of the data. That is what a data field is. We don't use that to store the data. That is not a storage system of any sort. That is why data field is not the answer. So we'll cross C off as well. Now we're only left with D, data warehouse. So obviously that'll be the answer. And now if you encounter this question in the exam and you see data lake, as an option anywhere or data lakes, so you will choose that over data warehouse because the actual answer for this question is data lakes, but since that is not available in the options, we'll choose data warehouse. So once again, D data warehouse is the answer for question 32. But I repeat again, if you see data lakes anywhere as an option for this type of question, where you need to store both structured and unstructured data, you will choose data lakes. Simple way to remember this is obviously lakes have way more storage space than data, uh, well, a warehouse. Now the thing is unstructured data, it involves, it requires more space. And since you're storing both structured and unstructured data, you need a lot of space and data lakes are convenient for that. So if the options contain both data lakes and data warehouse, you will choose data lakes over data warehouse. But for this question, It'll be data warehouse since data lakes is not an option. Let's head on to the last question of this part, question 33, which is a very simple question actually. 
Let's see, an organization operates their entire IT infrastructure from Google Cloud. What should they, should they do to prepare for data breaches? Let's read the options. Very easy question, I say. Option A, reduce reliance on multi-factor authentication. Option B, data security is Google's responsibility, so our preparation is minimal. Option C, create an incident plan to mitigate impacts. And option D, create the, strengthen their data center parameter security. Now the main aim of the question is, what should we do to prepare for data breaches? Like how do we prevent data breaches? Now we'll see option A does the complete opposite. It says reduce reliance on multi-factor authentication. Now the thing is multi-factor authentication helps us prepare for data breaches. It keeps the system secure. Now if you're reducing the reliance on such a system or such a way of authentication, then obviously you're more vulnerable for two data breaches. That is why A is not the answer, it is false. You instead want to be reliant on the multi-factor authentication. Now let's read B. Data security is Google's responsibility, so preparation is minimal. It's telling you that you need to do nothing. You don't need to do anything. It is Google's responsibility. That's like saying if you live in an apartment complex, you will not put uh, locks on your own door. And you're reliant on the organization which runs the building to put a lock on the front door and not your not the individual doors to the apartments which is false, someone will break in. That is why data security is also our responsibility, it's not just Google's responsibility. That is why B is not the answer. So let's cross B off. Now from C and D, right, when you were reading the options, you could clearly tell that C was the answer, but let's head on to D and see why D is not the answer. Let's read D, it says to strengthen their data center parameter security. It's telling you, suppose, you have two security guards to increase that to four. Would that do anything? No, because data breaches happen over the internet. No one is physically going there and stealing the hardware. Instead, they're um, hacking through the internet, through the network. That is how data breaches happen in the modern times. That is why strengthening their data center perimeter security won't do anything. That is why D is not the answer. Let's cross D off. So we're only left with C, create an incident plan to mitigate impacts. What, what does this mean? It's similar to how you create plans, mitigation plans to prevent or to prepare for landslides, earthquakes, or any natural disasters. This is similar. You create an incident plan. You find out why the data breaches are happening. And with that plan, you know how to mitigate. You know how to mitigate the impacts. You know how to prevent any severe damage. That is why C is our answer. Once again, C, create an incident plan to mitigate impacts, is the answer for question 33. All right, guys, that was the end of this part. Make sure to leave a like on the video and comment down below if you have any suggestions. And once again, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Also, as mentioned in other videos, we offer memberships, so please become a member of our channel. Join as a member of our channel, and you'll be able to get access to other videos, too. Please keep in mind that the videos available to the members are not available to the general public, so it will also help in preparing for examinations and help you be ahead of others. Alright guys, that's a wrap. See you guys next time. Bye.